Oh, it's scorching across the country, and a new study suggests there is a temperature that's too hot for humans to survive in. Data from researchers in England says the body may stop functioning optimally, which sounds like, well, like, like living, when outside of temperatures climb to 104 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. It's another reason why many people choose not to move to Mars. Yes. But let's talk about here on Earth and the dangers of extreme heat with our Nine Health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. We just had a very interesting uh, chat about the organs and how your organs, you know, are, are tested by heat. But you say the number one organ may not be something we think about. No, it's the most effective organ at regulating your body temperature. It's our skin. Hmm. And we don't think about that as an organ, but really our brain has a thermostat. It's called the hypothalamus. It detects that the ambient temperature is higher, releases hormones and changes to the skin, the nerves in the skin that then bring up water from the skin. We start sweating and that's how we cool ourselves as it evaporates. And that's what we were also discussing, the idea of what, what's worse. Like my cousin in Arizona said, and he's lived there forever, this is the worst summer I can ever remember. But that's a dry heat, technically. Yep. But if you're on the East Coast and if they get, or somewhere else in the South where they have high humidities, what's worse for your it's body? It's much worse when there's high humidity, even at lower temperatures. And the reason okay. is because these auto regulation mechanisms, the way that our body regulates heat is through opening up our blood vessels, evaporating that water, that sweat, those fail because when it's humid out you don't your sweat doesn't dry off and yeah, so that feel like you're constantly like you're in drenched a shower a swamp that's right so what does the body do to try to give off the heat it starts to raise your metabolic rate instead mm -hmm. and that's what the study really showed is that even at 104 degrees our metabolic rate goes up and by 122 degrees our core body temperature starts to rise so you're talking about the skin, I would think that includes, I mean, the best ways to try to mitigate these things, shade for one thing is, yeah. is always good, getting indoors, things like that. But people always talk about hydration. That's right, because that water that you bring up, you need to replenish it. And it's not just water, it's actually salts as well. So potassium and, and sodium, and because when we sweat, we lose salt as well. So, so you, it's not just water you probably need to be putting in your body. What are some of the things you can put in your body that help you along with water? The electrolyte solutions are very helpful because those also hold on to water more efficiently. So of course the water is important, but then you can lose it quickly. If you add salt and potassium, so sodium and, and chloride to that, as well as potassium, you actually hold on to that water more efficiently as well. So that is an important thing to do. Obviously having a way to spritz yourself and cool yourself off. So one of those little pocket fans that aids that body's thermostat, you know, the opening up the, the AC vents, I like to call it on the skin, by aiding that evaporation being in the shade, covering up as really well. Really effective? I mean, are those things, I mean, like even a little fan can be really effective? But only if you add water to it, Tom. Okay. Because that's that evaporative mechanism. That's how we cool off our skin quickly. Now, of course, the blood vessels opening up in and of themselves, our skin feels warm because that gives off heat. We start to breathe a little bit heavier because that gives off heat as well. And our metabolic rate increases and that gives off heat. When we're on certain medications, for example, that impair our ability to open the blood vessels, blood pressure medicines, Water pills like diuretics, all of those can put us at high risk, huge high risk, yeah. So um, not everybody has air conditioning, we know this. Um, but there are groups that are more susceptible, right? Older people, I would think. Yeah, so think about their thermostats as just not being as sensitive. Their thirst mechanism is impaired as well, so they don't even know when they're thirsty and their thermostat doesn't regulate their temperature. Babies is the other big one, mm -hmm. of course, and pets as well, because they can't communicate. All of these people, these types of groups need extra support. Pregnant women, anyone with diabetes, with heart disease, with any kind of nerve condition, those are higher risk people as well. And we even put people with mental health conditions into a higher risk mm. category, because often these people don't know how to keep themselves safe. Oh, okay. So you mentioned the, the electrolytes and salt, and I always remember old sports trainers used to, to avoid cramping. Pickle juice or brine would be something they oh, would give. Oh, is it salty? Yeah, just to help with cramping. It's not gonna, you know, keep yeah, it cool. And, and of course, as a cardiologist, I'm not a huge fan of salt in general. Right. No, or no. high blood pressure, but in these types of situations. You gotta get from here to there. <laughs> yes, when you're, when you're really trying to hydrate yourself, you wanna make sure you have lots of access to lots of fluid and, and sodium as well. Well, pay attention to yourself, your loved ones, pets as well. Take care of everyone when yeah. it's this hot. That's, it's, it's, it really is so serious and intense. I learned a lot, and my skin, my organ. Thank you, Tom, for asking the good questions. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Dr. And thanks Coley. for the answer, which is probably more <laughs> important than the question. Dr. Pyle Coley, thanks as